Welcome to the final video in our pay-per-click series where we're going to be talking about campaign management and optimizing your pay-per-click campaign to improve its profitability over time. Now before we get started, I just want to say that management of the PPC campaign is really, really important. Some people still think that pay-per-click is a kind of set and forget ad platform. Like they say to us things like, oh, can you just set up the ad campaign and then we'll just leave it running. Like if you can just set it up so it's really well optimized, we'll just leave it running. It's a really bad way of doing things. It's a bit like saying to a personal trainer, if you can just get me really fit, I'm then just gonna coast the rest of my life because I'll be in really good shape. You know, my body will be metabolizing, blah, 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 blah. Never gonna happen. Before long, you're gonna be a massive mess. So, the, exactly the same with your pay-per-click campaign. You wanna start lean and continue lean. You don't wanna start lean and then just go, Boy! let's open the floodgates. Sergey Brin needs some more cash. So, what are we looking for? What are we doing when we're managing a pay-per-click ad campaign? What are the things that our PPC ninjas are doing on a daily and weekly basis to improve the performance? Well, one of the first things that we do, and one of the most frequent things that we do, particularly during the early days of a campaign, is check out what's called the search query reports, the SQRs. Now these search query reports give us a breakdown of all of the phrases that have triggered the ads. So what we'll see is we'll see all of the different keywords that have been triggering the ads, and we'll have a look at the amount of traffic that they've been generating and the number of conversions that they've been generating. And what we'll usually find is that there are particular keywords that have been generating a lot of traffic, but not so many conversions. So let's say for example, that we have a keyword here which has had 300 clicks, uh, but it's generated one conversion. Okay, now this is, we're working at really small numbers here, but let's just imagine this. So 300 clicks, one conversion. What can we say about that? Not converting particularly well. If there's a keyword over here which has had say 100 clicks, but it's generated eight conversions, we're thinking, oh, hold up, that's way more profitable, right? All else being equal, that's way more profitable. So what we might say in that particular situation is, well, hold on Google, we don't really want that one anymore. It's not performing as well. It might even be converting nothing, right? We don't really want that anymore. We're gonna take the budget from that one and we're gonna put more of it into that because it's clearly doing much better. So by digging through these search query reports, we're able to find what are the pockets of profitability that we can put more budget into. The other thing that we find from these search query reports is the variance of the keywords which really aren't relevant at all. So when we start a campaign, we'll often have a list or we'll always have a list of negative keywords that we don't wanna be targeting. Let's say we're working on a a water bottle company campaign, right? Seamless, you didn't even notice. A water bottle company campaign. Well, we might notice, for example, that we're, our ads are being shown for phrases like free water bottle. Well, that's clearly not relevant. That's not gonna be a buyer. So what we do is we'd add that as a negative keyword, which means Google, we don't wanna show up or we don't want our ads to show up anytime anybody uses the word free because that traffic just isn't qualified. So that's all stuff that we can get through the search query reports. One of the other really important things that we're analyzing when we're doing our campaign optimization is we're looking at conversion rates. So what percentage of the traffic that's coming through each of these ads is converting on this particular landing page or website? That can often guide us to a website or a landing page which isn't performing as well as it should do. We can then make tweaks to that, improve the conversion rate and improve the overall performance of the site, of the campaign. So what we might find is that the website itself isn't converting very well. If the client came to us with their own website and we didn't really think it was gonna convert but we wanted to test it with some traffic to find out, we'll then get that data and say, okay, this really doesn't look like it's going well. Let's build a landing page. We can compare the landing page traffic to the website traffic, see what conversion rate we get. If the landing page is outperforming the website, then we might wanna take the learnings from that and either rebuild the website or reconfigure the website or whatever. So that's really important. Looking at the conversion rates really helps us to dial in on the performance of the, tra uh, of the, uh, of the traffic on the site. And actually we'll also, as part of that, we'll also do heat mapping. So we'll actually have a look at what's happening with the traffic when it's getting on the pages. How far down the page is it scrolling? What are the elements that that visitor is clicking on? And does it indicate that they're, they're looking for something else that isn't being found on that page? Another thing that we'll do is we'll do split tests. 
So usually when we're setting up uh, a campaign, a pay-per-click campaign, if we've got a particular group of keywords that we're gonna be targeting, we'll set up an ad group for that. And in that ad group, there might be three different variants of each different ad. So add one, add two, and add three. And we'll cycle those against each other to see which is the best performing. Now let's say that we find that this one is the best performing. I was just on a call where we found out that one of the best performing was one that said upload your brief today. Right, so upload your brief today, that seems to be the best performing. We can then take that information back to the landing page. We can have an upload brief form. We might then want to change these ads to talk about the brief, and we might want to run different split tests against those to see if we can outperform that even further. So that information can then guide other keywords that we might want to be targeting. It can help us guide conversion rate optimization tweaks that we might want to make, and it will help us continually refine the ad copy as well. So those are some of the things that we're uh, tracking and optimizing for when we're managing a campaign. Then we also have things like, for example, device and time of day and even day of the week. And these are kind of bid adjustment things that we'll do. So for example, if we're tracking um, mobile versus desktop, right? Let's say that we notice that desktop is converting twice as many visitors as mobile. Well, we'll put a negative bid adjustment on mobile traffic and say, Google, we don't really want as much mobile traffic because it doesn't seem to be working as well. We, let's invest that money in desktop instead because it's performing much better. So we'll put bid adjustments on a device. Also looking at time of the day. So are we getting lots of conversions in the morning and fewer in the evening and none at night? Then we'll put bid adjustments on nighttime to say actually we don't want that traffic because it doesn't seem to be converting. Let's put that budget instead in the morning where we know it is converting. And then day of the week, same deal. So for example, if the business is generating phone calls and they're not even open at the weekend, we definitely want to make sure that the schedule is saying no ads during the weekend because it's not even going to be useful. So those are some of the things that we'll get through the data with the ongoing campaign management. Really important that stuff. Typically when we find a campaign that's been left to run for ages, there's just so much wastage in it. And, uh, and, and going through this stuff can really help trim the fat get it home, turn it into a beastly athlete, which is gonna be much more profitable for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick dive through pay-per-click video series. If you've got any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well, because we might post loads and loads of digital marketing videos. And of course, don't forget to check out the Exposure Ninja podcast. Every week I interview some of the world's best digital marketers. We dive into what strategies they're using, how they're making their money, and I also interview some of the ninjas from Exposure Ninja as well. Actually, those are my favorite episodes and they're the ones that get the best feedback, but don't tell the guests. So go and check out the Exposure Ninja podcast. You can go to iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you find your podcast, stick in Exposure Ninja and you'll see the Exposure Ninja digital marketing podcast. It'd be great to have you as a listener. Until next video, see you soon.